Welcome to, Cybernetics for Top Managers, presented by Universal 7, Governance and Management System. You will certainly decode the name, as we proceed with this presentation. Let's assume that this is your company, on the left. This is now. What will it look like in 3, 5 or 10 years from now? The purpose of this presentation, is to reveal to you the future of organizational evolution. The Universal 7, Governance and Management System will take you there. In the past, 20 years, complexity has been the number one challenge to business corporations and will continue to be so in the years to come. I am going to tell what U7 is about and why it is perhaps the best path to ensure your company's future. Let's start where the main thrust of the culture is right now. In matters of organizational structure. This is a typical organization chart. Thousands of other top managers are familiar with this hierarchical pyramid-like structure. It goes back at least to Cyrus the Great. It has become a paradigm the accepted model, by thousands of CEOs all over the world. You, are not alone. Here are some notable examples. This is what Apple looks like, under Tim Cook. This is what Google looks like. Sometimes. This is. The Amazon command structure. This is what Microsoft looks like, according to them. Different shapes, but still the same type of description. Here are four revolutions in business and their approach. The first is the industrial revolution. Then came the automation revolution. I now introduce to you the complicated systems revolution that takes the management fads approach. You copy what works until it doesn't. Now we are entering the complex system revolution. As you shall see, complex and complicated are very different. Dave Snowden has created the Keen AFIN framework. He travels all over the world to explain the difference between simple, complicated and complex systems. Simple are visibly obvious systems, governed by cause and effect. For instance a hammer and nails. Complicated systems are for instance many business solutions, that are presented as systems, but are made of hundreds of rules, standards and formulas. This is the world of management fads, and consulting experts, that never say goodbye. Complexity is actually the world of living things. Applied to business, you are emulating the processes seen in nature. The key words are self-organization, learning, adaptation, sensing, reacting. Instead of huge plans, you create capabilities. Many new business solutions, such as agile, Scrum, etc., are bridges between complicated systems, and complex, living, systems. Here are some of the victims of the complexity revolution. I bet they all had access to tons of traditional consulting. And still, they are. Gone. We shall return to complexity later. Here is another angle. Many years ago, a top management expert from Harvard, suggested that the structure of very large corporations should look more like nation states and become resilient. To learn quickly and adapt. This was 17 years ago. Why would he say that? Hint. 
the United States of America has endured over 240 years, and is the world's foremost superpower. So, in spite of all the millions of cases of corporations, that have the hierarchy experience in common, many of them still die unexpectedly, or are overtaken by other corporations. What is it about the structure of the United States? That has made it so resilient to changing circumstances. Do you want your company to think about acquiring resiliency? Will you follow Gary Hamill's advice? To give you the best answer available we have to go deeper into the complexity issue. Gary Hamill did not put it this way, but cyberneticians have known it for a long time. The truth is simple and inescapable, the United States, is organized as a viable system. Viable systems and the laws of control that govern them, have been studied by Stafford Beer, an English professor and creator of management cybernetics. All living things, have a recursive structure. The United States is an organization that shares that quality. Recursiveness means that each one of these four levels of government also has a self-balancing, governance system, with many corrective feedback loops. Spread all over the place. The ones shown in this graph are very famous, the so-called balance of powers. But you also have elections, and the justice system for punishing illegalities at every level. Now, it is easy to understand why we are dealing with universal phenomena. And why Gary Hamill had a point. On the other hand, think about your corporation. How old is it? How long will it last? Look at what is going on. Fortune 500 companies are lasting 15 years on average. Smaller corporations usually last much less. We have to dive deeper into the complexity issue. I know I said I would talk about cybernetics. And I know cybernetics sounds mysterious, or foreign or technical or to some, even outdated. But, before you raise any one of those barriers, allow me to give you some really hard historical facts. Cybernetics was born in 1948 as control and communications in the animal and the machine. As in the title of Norbert Wiener's book. Wiener was a mathematical child prodigy, that spent most of his life. Teaching at MIT. He is the founder of, Cybernetics. Now look around you. Cybernetics is everywhere. It shapes the world we live in right now, just as much. Or more, than physics and quantum physics. Computers, lasers, information satellites, iPhones, information theory, artificial intelligence, network theory and, complexity sciences. All these came from cybernetics. Cybernetics accomplished all this, when it connected purposeful machines and living things. Technical feedback information allows both to display purposeful, goal-getting activity. Business took the computerized, but still, reductionist approach. This gave rise to the complicated solutions. And the fact remains that all these methods and techniques have not prevented gigantic corporate failures. For instance, preventing the 2008 banking crisis, which devastated the world economy. Management cybernetics took the organic route to business organization structure. In 1971 Stafford Beer, its creator, went to Chile to help organize a real-time economy for President, Salvador Allende. That was almost 50 years ago. Stop, 
and contemplate the significance of this graph. This is how cybernetics got started, with the joint collaboration of many other sciences. This provides a much better map of the evolution of science and shows the two-way streets between cybernetics and other sciences, such as biology, psychology and sociology. Clearly, these three sciences belong to the upper realm of informed systems. These are some of the many scientists that helped propel the new science of cybernetics the world over. They met at the Macy Conferences in New York, in the years following World War II. These meetings, have been labeled as, the Big Bang. Of the Information Age. With cybernetics as the mother science, we can see two very different applications of the same science. Business took the reductionist software approach that eventually produced ERPs, and also the complicated systems of the management fads. Today, however, to overcome the problems posed by complexity, there is no other way out but to embrace the more organic models. Universal 7 is a newer and perhaps simpler to grasp version of Stafford Beer's viable system model created in the 70s. Traditional consulting has run out of tricks. No linear thinking is going to solve today's complexity.